That's your motivation. Yes. Adam Sessler. Right. Okay. Hey there, guys, gals, friends, and pals. This is Paul Acevedo, East X Twitch from Windows Central. Tonight I'm joined on the mic by my good friends Brian and Adam. Yo. And we are going to stream Mega Coin Squad from Big Pixel Studios. This is available exclusively on Xbox One and Steam. Hello, Cryptica. Hello, Bob Jones. Glad you guys made it to the stream. So we'll go ahead. I'm going to hop into the settings real quick. I just want to point out the that you cannot adjust sound levels. So I've had to turn my sound all the way down because my monitor doesn't get very quiet. So uh, developers, don't forget, allow us to adjust the levels of the sound, not just toggle it on and off. I think somebody made that joke before, Gomez. Oh, <laughs> dude, that was like, man, that was just last week. <laughs> That's your new... Yeah, <laughs> you gotta, I'm pretty sure I remember a, that. You got to wait a week before uh, that happens again. You're not allowed to use the uh -huh. joke. It's your new nickname, man. Lockdown. Good to see you, dude. Lockdown made it. Excellent. And there's Gamer Club. Yeah, I hope this will be good. Remember, I'm a little bit tired tonight. Please bear with me. I did not get nearly enough sleep because I had a very time-consuming review taken up all morning for me. And I'm on a graveyard shift. You can I hope do it, so. Paul. I'm right <laughs> behind you. Well, not physically. Not in a weird, ah. sexual way, but I'm there. Sure. Sure you're not. you got to get me the robot. first. Okay, yeah, the, you have five characters to pick from. They have different stats. Each one has their own campaign to go through. The campaigns are actually the same, but achievement-wise, you need to go through all their campaigns, and they do have a little story. Schoolgirl's creepy looking. Robot, robot, yeah, robot, it's weird. Robot. I really like the game's art overall, but the close-up drawings are a little bit fugly. <laughs> so here's our introduction. He's playing coin team. And the machine is overheating. I've seen a little bit of this game. I actually think it's oh. pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's it got sort of a Super Mario World thing going on. I like that a lot. I mean, it doesn't... It's weird. It, you know, it plays like its own thing, but the visuals are heavily inspired by 16-bit games and River City Ransom, I guess. Throw in Super Mario World, River City Ransom in a blender, and you have how the actual game looks. That guy's like Dr. Wiley. <laughs> Come join the Mega Coin Squad. Why not? And now he's a cyborg. Guys, oh, what was the review for? That's a good question, Bob Jones asks. Yes, guys, today we published a big, big review of mine, and I hope you will all read it and leave a comment on it. It's the review for the Games Vanguard Black Edition, which is a portable case and monitor for the Xbox One and other game systems. So please check it out. We really need comments on that review. That's how the publisher, the creator of that product, knows that you guys liked the story. So, And the video, also the video, a lot of work it went into that. You may not be able to tell by looking at it, but yeah, I had to do a lot of setup and shooting and editing to get that video together. Uh, <clears throat> people saying there, are, there is no sound whatsoever. Uh-oh. Well, crap. Let's stop and fix that real quick, why don't we? All right. I like stoppages. Pig! Pig! Oh, I thought you were calling me a pig. No, no, get that, get those coins and put them in the pig. Uh, I just turned the sound up a lot, so from then let me know if there is any sound. Ah! All right, dang. Yeah, or, or the audience can tell us. I actually think my Xbox One might be messing up, because, yeah, the, there was no menu music there, and I guess even when I turned the sound to my monitor back on, there was still no menu music. There's, uh, there's, uh, music in the screen. Oh, okay, is it too loud? It's probably too yeah. loud. I thought it was okay. I unmuted for a second. Yeah, it sounds alright. Right. I'm here, I'm here, I'm just not saying very much. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? <laughs> don't Tyler don't be uh, uh be jealous. hating over there be jealous so let's talk about what you're supposed to do in the game that you know there's a bunch of single player levels there's also a multiplayer versus mode which we're maybe not going to look at tonight probably not anyway you want to collect all these coins you have to get a certain number of them into the piggy bank before time runs out you're also trying not to die if you can avoid it because it's got a three-star rating system, depending on your completion time, 
coins, uh, whether you had to drop coins in the bank more than once or whether you did it only once. And now let's go to the bank. Let's see, push the Y button to bank the coins. And yeah, hey, Null hopefully Vector. that gets me three stars. Yeah, good to see you, Null Vector. Yeah, it's the case that if you uh, it's the case that if you die with the coins and you lose those coins, like. You could like bank quick to save them, or you could hold on to them and get a big bonus if you bank a bunch at the same time. Is that the yeah, right? exactly, because otherwise there'd be no reason to not bank right away, right? Then at the end here, you have this random power-up that you can get for the next round. And it's funny, it's kind of like Super Mario Bros. 3 is Fireball upgraded. Oh, well, that's nice. And do I get one more? Yeah, I get one more based on how many stars I got. So... Looks like in Inverted Axis rated that two diamonds. Double jump unlocked. Good. That's an important move. <laughs> two diamonds out of three. Hey, I did my best. Two diamonds out of two. <laughs> you know, even though I like this game quite a lot, I've never had a good opportunity to put some time into it. So I'm thankful that we're able to do a stream for it tonight. Bank 250 coins. That does mean that I'm not super good at the game yet. Yeah, I'm sure it's E for everyone, <laughs> I don't think. And I, don't, I don't know. Well, I already went to the menus and turned all the nudity off, so don't worry about that. Oh. Wait, oh yeah, I've got a double jump now. Boom, so much better. Now I got a gun, drill cannon, what does this do? Little weird thing is the B button fires the gun, and yeah, that, that should be X. Bad. But X button dashes. So, I, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, if you're going to make a button dash, you should be X because if it were me, like, I'd kind of dash with the front of my thumb and then hit the jump with the other part of my thumb, you know? That's how I usually dash ah. and jump. Well, one plus side is you can also use the bumpers. So, left bumper dashes and right bumper fires. It's just, yeah. It, okay. Oh, man. I just got hit and lost my coins. Way to go, Paul. Way to go, Paul. Sneak, yeah, sneak. for the purpose of tonight's stream, we're not going to replay levels, most likely. We'll just complete them however we did that time. So poorly. Well, this time. Yeah. Oh. oh, one went okay. Yeah. There's some interesting hazards, you know, it draws from a lot of 8 and 16-bit games. And that makes it pretty fun, especially if you have any nostalgia for this era of gaming. Sniper going with deep cuts with New Zealand story. I like it. I like it, Sniper. He's one of the good people now. I can't say I've even heard of that game. Uh, I, I have. It's a Taito game. Classic Taito game. Had nice little character art. I don't know if I ever played much of it. I'm sure I did play, like, I don't know, TurboGrafx-16 version or something, but it's been a while. Ah! Alright, can I go to the bank? Yes, I can. Speaking of New Zealand... You guys know how I'm into creating custom decals for Forza Motorsport 6, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, if only I hadn't died, I would have gotten three stars there. Well, it so happens that somebody commissioned me to do a custom decal for them in Forza 6. And that it was for a company, a company logo based out of Auckland, New Zealand. Wow, this is... It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and how much did I end up making on that deal? Ninety dollars total for the job. Hey, yeah, it was awesome. a lot of hours. I, you know, I charged basically my going rate, which is fifteen dollars per hour, and it, it was a lot of hours. Hmm. But the the logo turned out really well, and if you if you play Forza 6, hopefully you have chosen to follow me as a decal creator. You can do that. If you find my decals, you can choose to follow creator. But also, you can just go search for them right now, and you would be able to see the logo. And it had all this cursive writing, dude. That's why it took so many hours. Cursive writing and curves in general are super hard to reproduce in the Forza editor. Even though it's a powerful editor, it's not set up. I mean, it's still a lot more complicated to use than an actual art program. And I got a coin spawner, it just makes coins spawn behind me as I go around. Let's see if we can get a three star rating this time. I hope so. Do I still have my double jump? I do. That's good. So you can just be accumulating power ups and get stronger and stronger as you go along, as long as you keep getting high star ratings.
Yeah, it looks like Sniper linked to the Amiga version of the New Zealand story, which is something. It's hardcore. Uh, I don't think I've ever played. Yeah, I'm. I'm <clears throat> I'm sure I played the arcade version, and I think there probably was maybe a, was there a Genesis Mega Drive version. Almost remember. certainly. But there definitely, there definitely was an arcade version. It's on the uh, Taito Classics or something. Yeah, the Taito Classics. This is on way before my time. If anyone wants to play some New Zealand Story, you can pick up Taito Classics. Yeah, it would have already been out for a little while by the time you started playing games, Brian. But I mean, you're not that much different in age than us. Well. I mean, then zero you are, but not me. <laughs> Such an old man. 49. Uh, if not, 49. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I think that was an official three star. One, two, three, word. Where's my achievement? Nice. I think the achievement is for three starring all of them in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Torrente calling Uno on October 2nd. <laughs> we can only hope, Sergeant Torrente. Mm. We all hope and pray. Yeah, probably not. But, you know, keep your fingers crossed. Upper no. punch upgrade. Who's got Uno these do days? Is it Ubisoft? Ubisoft seems to have all those cards. Unless it's still Gameloft. Well, did they put out the, arc the uh, 360 arc game? Ground pound. Ooh. That was actually Microsoft, wasn't it? I think it's so. just Microsoft? Well, they probably still have it then. They don't give up things. <laughs> that kind of license is always timed in my experience, so who knows. Hey, American Hippie. Yeah. I believe we've seen American Hippie once before at least. It was made by Carbonated Games and released by Microsoft oh, Studios. This level's different. What? Where are all the coins? Is this just a boss level? Might be. Destroy the enemies. Oh, it says. Yeah, you know, that's what I get for not reading. Yeah. Oh, well, I just. Wait, well, reading is hard. I barely survive oh. getting a literature degree. Well, that's why you had me on the on the on the stream. You said, Adam, I need someone to read. <laughs> and I said, Well, that's me. That so was the main qualification. Uh -oh, we're in trouble. Hey, American hippie. Yep. Did you, Adam, did you ever get to watch that video I sent you about Star Wars? Let's see, Star Wars Episode 1. Remember, there's a good video about all the things yeah. that are wrong with it. It's called the Plinket Review. I uh, emailed you the link months you, ago, but I don't know if you ever got to see it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... Jayma. I don't think... I may have seen that, or... We definitely talked about it. I don't know if I watched it or not. Okay, uh, well, those... I mean, believe me, I know all the things that are wrong with it. Out of the Shire. I can't stand them. I can't, you know what? I tried to watch the movies <laughs> a while back and they're still awful. They definitely, definitely are. But like those videos, I mean, obviously like people, most people will intuitively know that the prequel Star Wars movies are not good movies. You'll just watch them and you'll say, hey, there's something wrong with these movies. And you'll have things you don't like about them. Sometimes it might be like, hey, that's just not a cool origin for Darth Vader or, or whatever. But they're actually tremendously bad movies in like every way that a movie can be bad they are bad they make oh i yeah. mean i believe it it's actually a like the uh like those movies had they not been star wars those would have been like the water those would have been like water world part two three or four, you know <laughs> you're I mean? right like that, they would have they would have been bombs no one would have watched them everyone would have made fun of them uh oh, they, crap. because they had that license I think it just goes to prove that uh, George Lucas just got lucky because he had didn't have the the resources to just uh, do his crazy wild every queries crazy wild fantasy he wanted to do. It does seem well. That way. I would say the first time it was he didn't have enough money and had people telling him no, you don't have enough money for that. And for the prequels, it was just yes, Mr. Lucas, yes, Mr. Lucas. Yes, exactly. Mr. Lucas. That's what I mean. Yeah. The first yeah, three. He just went crazy. crazy. You're so right. And th th and what a bummer, too, because those movies, like, in my opinion, the original movies, uh, like, the special effects and stuff still hold up better. Like, those movies are already looking dated. <laughs> like, really dated. Yes, and I, I don't think they looked good ever to me. You know, like, the, the all the backgrounds are computer-generated almost the whole time, right? And most, most of the yeah. time, the actors aren't even in the same physical space together, so they're just acting at a, at a sign, you know, things like that really ridiculous movie making 
and that it just never looked or felt right. Yeah, yeah, it sort of speaks for the uh, time when he made them. The CG was really <laughs> hot and heavy. Hey, we can make a movie almost completely with computer graphics. Won't that be great, everyone? And they're just like, yes, Mr. Lucas, yes. That's a good George Lucas <laughs> impression. But she sounds just like that. Almost certainly. Yeah. Uh, I think that I, I recall like that big battle still looked okay, like kind of yes. neat, at least at the time. You know, the big with the robots and the frog people oh, over yes. there. Ugh. The Jar Jar, the Jar Jar yeah, people. Yeah, I mean. I can't say there's no element of them that isn't acceptable, but just on the whole, they're pretty crappy. Point magnet. Yeah. Yeah, so what was my point in bringing that up, you might wonder? The point was that the people who made the Plinket review videos, which I highly recommend for anybody, whether or not you like the prequels, even if you do like them, there's a lot you can learn, but they taught me a lot about you know, things like character and stuff, and just understanding movie plots on a deeper level. But the information is presented in such a simple and entertaining way. It, you know, it's not like like a college lesson or something. It's just a really fun way to appreciate and learn about the movies and movies in general. So those people, they make they make a lot of videos. Still, they have a like a bi-weekly kind of movie review show called Half in the Bag. They put most of those on YouTube. Sometimes they would use a different video host, unfortunately. But now they're using YouTube again. And, uh, man, they are so entertaining. And last last night I watched... They also have a different show called Best of the Worst, where they watch, like, really old, obscure movies that most people will not have heard of. So I watch three of those movies, and they're almost always completely horrible. And they just kind of, like, talk about them and joke about them in a roundtable fashion. And it, it's very, very entertaining. And last week, last night, or their most recent episode of that show, I should say, I watched last night, and it was the best one yet. It was super, super good. They watched a movie called Future War. Either of you guys ever heard of it? Can't say have. It's pretty obscure, but it was in like a season 10 episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000. So some people will have heard of it. Although I think most people had, even most fans of Mystery Science Theater had checked out at that point because it had gone over to Sci-Fi Network, I think. I see. Yeah, but a really, really wacky movie about like, I don't know, there's cyborgs in the future who are going into the past to kidnap humans to make them as slaves and they use dinosaurs that they've taken from the past and trained to hunt the people down it's totally oh, this movie sounds yeah it's amazing. super ridiculous All right, I see this movie <laughs> yeah and i mean i would like to watch the whole god i'm getting hit a lot yeah the well, you can read dinosaurs and cyborgs oh, in a movie uh then we have a night <laughs> like we got a night you know what i mean like we got we got a night and you should see how poorly the movie is made, but it it's a funny kind of bad, like Troll 2 kind of bad, but maybe not as bad as Troll 2, but that kind of funny bad, you know, that that's funny to watch even if the movie is not made very well. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. It's always disappointing when you when you want a series that you like goes bad. Oh, you mean like... I was... Uh, what do you mean? A, a, mo a movie series. Like, you know, like... Maybe the first few are good, and then all of a sudden they start going direct to DVD, or they start getting crappy, and I don't know, just or they start being maybe <laughs> sci-fi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sci-fi takes them. I know destroyed. exactly what you mean. I mean, just look at Debbie Does Dallas '99. That is nowhere near as yeah. good as the original. <laughs> sure. Huh? The first one at heart. <laughs> what could top that? It truly did. Although I'm using it as a joke here. Um, let's see. I was thinking of. Jurassic um, World. You, got, uh, no, you don't. Well, Jurassic. Yeah, Jurassic. The Jurassic series. I haven't seen Jurassic World. Uh, the Jurassic series. I mean, the first one is so good. Uh, and Jaws too. Jaws. The second Jaws is okay. Like it's entertaining. And then I would. Anything after that. Once the shark ate a helicopter, I had to give up on Jaws too. It got pretty stupid. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you know, it's got that English guy in it that I like. Michael Caine. So. Yeah, Michael Caine. Uh, and, uh, what else? Oh, uh... Uh, you guys, you don't watch horror movies, but Wrong Turn... The first two Wrong Turns are awesome. And then the third Wrong Turn is the worst movie ever made. It's terrible. 
they go to all CGI special effects. Are you saying? Uh, and it's just, it's just made on a on a on a, on a shoestring budget. Did they make a wrong turn with that series? I would yes. That's all they did. Uh, what do you know? I didn't want to do that, Paul, because it was too easy. But you just take the little <laughs> hanging fruit. You need to. Sometimes you got. That was great. But you reach low and you grab on to whatever you find there. That's right. Yeah, get those apples that <laughs> fell on the ground. They're easy. Well, ah, oh, man, I, I, I keep dying. Mm -hmm. I have to concentrate a little better. Yo, Living Dead Girl, also known as Swizzler's Goddess. Glad to see she made it. Yo, Washimiro, he has a question. <laughs> I was considering it, Swizz. Uh, how are previous <laughs> uh, be working on our About Rock Band 4? Hey, Paul, I have lots of questions regarding Rock Band. Uh, related to hardware and also about previous games like Beatles. Would someone in God. WC, I'm assuming that's Windows Central, but it could be the water closet, <laughs> be working on an article? Uh, when is that game coming out? You guys, do you know? Soon. It's coming out soon. Oh. Maybe this month. <laughs> Thank you, Cluck My Duck. Is he trying to get the donation beating thing going? That happened uh, last there's... weekend. Everyone kept donating a dollar more than the last person. It was exciting. It just happened organically. I don't see. What is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, I forgot yeah. one on the delay. All right. Paul, don't die this time. Gotta remind myself. Thanks yeah, thank you very much. You're a real hero. Appreciate you guys supporting the stream. God, I died again. All right, I gotta get my head in the game here. <laughs> it's pretty much firemen, policemen, astronauts, and cook <laughs> That's more. That's my they top be four. Heroes. They're, they could be heroes, just like you. Okay, I gotta remember to take everyone off my favorites because favorite notification gets pretty annoying when I'm doing things, shooting videos or whatever I like to do. Ah, okay. What were we just talking about? Oh yeah, Rock Band. Uh, the answer is that I would like to start giving Rock Band some coverage. You know, I've worked with the the people who make Rock Band. Mad Cats? No, I mean, the people who act... Harmonix, yeah. Harmonics. I've worked with them on yep. the Dance Central games for years and years. They never... I mean, they just refuse to add me to their press list, you know? Like, they... So I always have to go after them for games and stuff, which is not the normal way that games PR is handled and man so it's really hard to dedicate attention to a, a game where they don't care if you cover it or not when there actually are people hounding me to cover their stuff you know so unfortunately I haven't written any coverage of Rock Band 4 even though I really love the series I've got all three of the main Rock Band games and all the good spin-offs Beatles and Green Day and ACDC those are all the ones that count, aren't they? Well, uh, one of those was <laughs> good. Which one? Uh, I like them all. Game. Oh, and the Lego one too. That was a weird one. Oh, yeah, that's that's a jump. That's like jump the shark moment for Rock Band. Yeah, maybe they shouldn't sure. have released it, just as far as getting people to buy it goes. But the song selection was really cool. You know, it had the Ghostbusters song and other fun songs yeah, no. like that. I'm just saying, like it's just a, it's just like a you're just grasping it. It's a grasping at straws yeah. title for sure. Yeah, you, you, you're pretty much saying, give us your money. Uh, but it is, I, I don't, how do they go about, like, you know, it's not like they can just give you a digital code. I mean, you gotta get, you gotta get a, you gotta get a guitar, right? Yeah, well, you can just get an adapter and use your old equipment, and I do have some old equipment, so I should. But the, the guitars are new, right? Like, there's, there's a new, new one, but you, you can use the old one, you don't have to get the new one. You can yeah. use your old ones if, if you buy the adapter, which looks like a little uh, a little amp. But isn't there a new feature on the on there, the guitars? If there is, it's not like, important. Like, like uh, you're thinking of guitar. the new Guitar Hero game, yeah. which they've yeah. changed the button layout to like three and three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I am thinking of that. So it's more like chords and stuff or something. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I remember. I remember them doing. I remember one of those games doing something with the guitar. <laughs> Yeah, that they've. I think it Can was. I just hop um, on that guy? No, I can't. Guitar Hero that they've done that with. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool that they they're gonna put out an adapter for the uh, for the old guitars because, man, like having to buy more plastic yeah. instruments. Like if you had to buy a whole new set, like if you had the drums and the guitar, and you just had to buy a whole new everything of that. 
a lot of people have just completely moved on and don't even have their old equipment, even if they were supporters of the game. But yeah, if you still have your equipment, it's really good to be able to still use it, definitely. Yeah, I've got it. It's just shoved in my closet somewhere. It's been years and years since they released one. It has, and you know who killed off the... It's not... You know, Harmonix put out a few too many games, but also I still place most of the blame on Activision, because they were pooping out so many Guitar Heroes. Like, 12 yeah, Guitar they're, Heroes a year. They're, they're, I mean, Activision is a slash and burn company. They just come in, take everything, and, uh, you know, leave nothing. You know what I mean? Like, they're just... They're just that's their... But that's their... That's their... That's the way you're they right. You're right. Well, it is very yeah. true. Uh, they're the pillage and plunder <laughs> company. They are pillage sort of and plunder like company. EA. Squeeze everything you can get out of it, and then just leave the... I mean, the EA targets. will annualize a franchise, but EA never ran any series into the ground as much as what Activision did with Guitar Hero. It's crazy. Yeah, it was pretty bad. There, doing better so far. Having. A... I liked... Uh, I preferred... Yeah, but I preferred Rock Band's like, DLC model, you know? Yeah, like, how could just... you not? Constantly releasing more songs. Well, the nice uh, thing about the new one is that all the old I... songs are going to be compatible with the new game. So That's any of the old Rock Band songs that you bought, you can play yeah, in the new that one. that is awesome. That is going to give so many people a huge leg up right from the very beginning. Because if you've bought... Uh, the only ones that won't carry forward are like the Beatles, because you got to play that on that game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, due to just, licensing yeah restrictions. shame on Beatles for that. Yeah, well, they've always kind of been money that grubbers. Although the Beatles Rock Band was pretty fun to play. It's, it's kind of Beatles it overkill, great. but at least they did give you a lot of Beatles history and stuff to make it more worthwhile. That was a big... Wasn't the Beatles Rock Band a big deal or something? Like, wasn't it... Because there wasn't a lot... For a while, long time, there wasn't a lot of, like, licensed Beatles yes. music. You know what I mean? Yeah, they didn't license their stuff digitally until... Very, very recently, only four or five years ago. There we go. So that I, I, so I'm right in saying that that rock band was like a big deal. Like that was like a kind of a major get. Yeah, but it didn't sell well enough to justify its existence. So even though it was a musical accomplishment and all that, and the licensing deal, it was not a good idea. It had the whole. Uh, didn't it have a whole set? You know, you could buy with. With the guitar. Yeah, I bought it. <laughs> oh, you did. Wow. Have, you did buy it. Was it was it different special guitar? It's different looking, thing? right? Uh, they were yeah, different looking. I mean, the yeah. guitar looked like a, a Paul McCartney's bass. Oh, that's awesome. You know, that's so cool. Yeah, nice. But uh, the everything else was pretty much standard rock band stuff. The drum kit had a special uh, cover for the front of it. Otherwise, it was just a standard drum kit. Crap. That's cool. Still. I just found out that walking away from the piggy bank will make you stop banking the coins. I thought they would just continuously bank, but no, it stops. So I. Well, it, it'll continuously bank for a little while. If you get far enough, they will stop depositing. I just ran. Uh -huh. So I would have beaten the level, but then I screwed up. Sorry, everybody. I'm sure you're happy to see the same level 12 times in a row. But this game is not. It's not too hard in the way that last week's game, Project Root, was. Project Root is really unfairly hard. This is just more a matter of concentration. Yeah, this seems a lot pretty skill-based. I mean, if you if you fail, it's you know it wasn't because the game cheated you. It's because you failed. That is a good way to put it. Uh, EA's the same compared to Activision. Not. Neither one is the same. Yeah, neither neither is the same, but no, they they both do different things. So I wouldn't just say, well, everything EA does, Activision does, and vice versa, because that's not true. You know, they have their own different quirks. I mean, I I never I you know the people that get all mad about these giant <laughs> million dollar companies being million dollar companies is is you know they're not they no company is out to be your friend like they're all they're all out to make money and they all want to you know do that on the backs of a good product it, you know and i think activision is probably the same it's just you know it's they they're just a little more uh comfortable about it you know but i think ea's been cool ea's put out over the years some other interesting titles uh you know that weren't you know, just your super hardcore, super, you know, they yeah, have mirrors edge. Yeah, it's just what I was like thinking that. of. Yeah, they're uh, starting to 
turn into a regular publisher again. You know, yeah. They, they have the yearly COD and Black Ops and those sorts of things, but they are starting to release some more interesting news titles. Wait, titles. Activision or EA? EA? EA does Battlefront. COD is Activision. <laughs> oh, COD is Activision. Okay. I can't remember. I don't play those <laughs> games. Oh. Yeah, I would say EA has this thing they mostly want to put out games that are just going to be huge massive hits and nothing else lately so they have hmm. stopped doing smaller more interesting yes. titles except for unravel which is an exception to the rule but that's unusual for them yes that looks really interesting yeah i played a3 and i really liked it i if you're not into puzzle platformers i don't think it's going to be dramatically different from other things but it but it's a clever and pretty puzzle platformer and that's fine i, I like that kind of game it's Max very Morton pretty Moss. cool the only thing I remember about Unravel is that guy nearly passing out on the stage. <laughs> that was weird, right? Yeah, that guy was freaking out. He was really on the verge. Oh, American Hippie says I put on a good performance. Thank you, American Hippie. <laughs> I'm sure he's talking about me and not Paul McCartney. No, oh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Paul McCartney's old. He can't put on a good performance. Well, you. Thank you. John... You know, Mr. Lennon was all about, uh, you know, smoking weed and hanging out with his strange wife. John, yeah, I mean, John Lennon was the, he was the, he was the soul of the Beatles. I would say Paul McCartney. Yeah, Paul McCartney's, he's saying he's a bit all about the dollars more than the message. I, In his old I, age, perhaps. Maybe. I mean, he's well, got more money than he'll ever need. But I would say anything... Most things of substance that came out of the Beatles probably were for huh. Probably. Uh, I would say, you know, any of the any of the poppy uh, poppy hits, Paul McCartney. Certainly, Ringo Starr is responsible for everything like good. Poppy hits. Yep. He was in, uh, and he was also a train conductor on Thomas. Oh, huh, that's funny. Thomas the Tank Engine. Really. You know what my favorite Beatles thing is? Have you guys ever seen mm. Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's a great comedy. It's ostensibly a parody of Walk the Line, which is in itself a very fine movie about Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. And so it's it uses that movie as a framework, but it actually parodies like all kinds of music and stuff. And all the songs in it are written by real-life big musicians and so they're all actually good songs and stuff and they're all they also happen to be funny really great comedy but the best part in the movie has dewey cox meeting the beatles and the beatles are played by jack black and a few other comedians and that part of the movie is the absolute funniest part of the movie like the way the beatles talk to each other and all the stuff they do it is super super funny you just you have to at least look up that scene on youtube but i, I do recommend watching the whole movie it won't let you down Cool. Can I tell you ah, something cool. also? Can I can I can I go off on a small tangent? Let's hear here? it. Uh oh. I and I have no affinity for Thomas the Tank Engine. Sure. Like obviously, I was not a kid when I was around. But he used to be cool little uh, miniatures on a miniature train station, and it went around, and everything was awesome. And now it's all oh, CG. Yeah, all of it. What a punch <laughs> in the balls that is. I'd be so bummed if I was a kid. I bet little kids don't even really know the difference. They don't yeah. even notice, man. Kids are, but the thing is, kids are yes. idiots, right? If I, they, they yes, need to they make, are. If there was a Thomas the Train Engine for adults, that would not <laughs> fly. There would be 4chan message boards, and uh, there but would be, like, be, you know, petitions. Littered. The Pope would have to write in to pardon <laughs> it. Oh, God. Yeah, it's not a good thing. Did you ever see... The CG Voltron cartoon. There's a Voltron done with American CG, so naturally the robots look like crap, etc. Also, CG animation mm. back then on for TV level budgets was terrible. It's still not great, but especially early on, it did not look good. I imagine it's terrible. Uh, business happened in music, American hippie. Like all <laughs> things. We like American music. Scenes in Ant-Man with Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, that was really fun. 
Ant-Man is one of the best movies Marvel has done, period. And it was kind of a sleeper hit, but some people still don't really understand how cool it is. Like, it is the kind of movie that just about anybody would like as long as they have joy and love in their heart. So, I do think you would like it, Adam, it if you could pull the stick out of your butt. <laughs> ah! I don't think so. See? You're just like, does everyone get murdered? Nope, don't like it. But you're... That's a bad it was, attitude. It was a good movie. Let's try this again. I... No, that's not it my is attitude. Too. That is your criteria. It is not my my criteria is does it have superheroes <laughs> that I don't want to see? It's even worse. No, it's and not. It's not. That's some serious superhero. Yeah, but it, it is a heist is. movie, just like Captain America: Winter Soldier is a political thriller. So they oh, can great. be different genres and still have superheroes in them, which is a cool thing. It's like oh, Swizzlers, thank you. Just like sci-fi movies and or, no. I don't know what I was talking about. Yeah, well... Yeah, I think you lost Okay, for instance, now. there's a lot of different sci-fi movies out there, but they can be a whole lot different from each other, and even the same can be true for horror, and other, you know, bigger genres can have other genres within them, so to speak. I'm not saying they don't. I'm saying I'm not going to subject myself to it. Bad attitude. Yeah. You can say that if you want. Uh, Walking Dead fan here. Yes, Walking Dead is awesome. Oh, I haven't Bloody. watched. Uh, I haven't, okay, listen. I have not watched the uh, the. Fear I hear of that Walking one's Dead better because it has better see. character work. Well, let's see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I have problems with The Walking Dead, but I still enjoy it. I'm not saying it's perfect. There's some issues with it, but uh, I still enjoy it. I just don't understand the rabid fan base for The Walking Dead. It's just, I guess just because yeah. it's long form. You know, there's lots of zombie entertainment out there, but there is no other zombie entertainment yeah. where you can stick with it for years and years. That's true. And That's true. The, uh, you know, it, be, not just well, zombies, okay. but, you know, the end of the world. Like, I just find, I think a lot of people also it's just, just find sort it of a destruction fetish. Uh, I just find it. I find it, burn. <laughs> perhaps so. Well, you know, I find the end of the world and like what becomes of everything. Like when things just stop, I just find that fascinating. Like anything, you know, like Omega Man or you know things like that. Like anything where it's like the world has just come to a stop and now there's a few people left. Like I find that fascinating. So zombies often do that in their movies, and I, that's part of the reason I, I love. I thought zombies. it was because everyone dies. Uh, well, you know, any time. Yeah, listen. Tell me the elevator scene in uh, Dawn of the Dead is not amazing. It's, it's awesome. been a while I since seen I've seen it. I have seen the movie, but it's been a really long time. So. Yep. You know what is awesome is all the scenes in Shaun of the Dead except for when his mom dies. Oh, yes, it sad. is too sad. And I, although it is teaching you a lesson, I don't think it fits with the actual tone of the movie. I mean, it fits with the theme of the movie, but the movie's more lighthearted tone does not mix well with that serious a scene. I, I liked it. I liked, I liked that they mixed it up. You know, you, you have Zombieland if you just want to be absolutely, you know, fun and... But they and, killed uh, Bill Murray. Uh, yeah, no, Oops. I know, it is oh, yeah. lighter. You're right. Yeah. Zombieland's a lot lighter. But I love Zombieland, too. Me, too. Those are my... Those and 28 Days Later are my favorite zombie movies. Yeah, you'd have to ask my wife. She's the zombie aficionado in our family. Not in the horror she movies even myself. into White Zombie and Rob Zombie? Mm, can't say Living Dead she Girl? Is. That's a song by him. Dragula? Mm -hmm. It's also one of our there viewers. You know, yeah. yeah. The Halloween movies. Nice segue. Here, Halloween 2 is kind of. His Halloween 2 director's cut is kind of good. Is that true, Adam? Zom yeah. Rob Zombie? I don't like. Okay. There's. I don't really like Rob Zombie's version of Halloween. I don't like the big hulking wrestler uh, <laughs> version version of Michael Myers that yeah. he has. You know, I like the creepy, kind of normal looking Michael Myers from the first original Halloween. I will say it is interesting. Like he does a lot of um, uh, look into the life of him as a yeah. kid. You know what I mean? Like there's a there's a bit of a lead up in the in the first movie, and I thought that that was interesting. Uh, but. Other than that, I, I I love the original so much. Like the original is one of my all-time favorite movies, and I. What's well, a John I, Carpenter movie? I, 
Well, he makes But he didn't. Movies. Back then, all of his movies up until a certain point in the 90s were really good. Yeah. And Halloween is no exception. And Halloween, and also, uh, and well, Halloween, the thing. Well, those movies are amazing. So. In the Mouth of Madness. Mouth of Madness, yeah, for sure. Still yeah. my favorite of his. One of my favorite horror movies, period. Uh, did you did you like uh, Serpent in the Rainbow? That one I haven't seen, and I would like to. Oh, it took too long on that one. Yeah, it's pretty trippy and weird. But Prince of... D Just looks wrong what you're doing <laughs> to that pig. Yeah! Ooh, Stop that pig! power-up unlocked. Let's see. Sorry, I haven't been watching the chat very well. Hey, Alejandro's here. Alejandro, Alex Skywalker, my friend, has been enjoying some spicy chips called Takis. Do they have Takis up in Canada? T-A-K-I, Taki. I've never even heard of it here. Yeah. Then spicy food's not my thing. You're like on a thing. You're on a kick that's not my oh. thing. Well, it's not, you know, I don't like extreme spiciness, but I do enjoy a little bit of a spicy chip, and they're lime flavored too, so they're just really, really good in my opinion. Mm. Sounds very Latin. Yes. They're a Mexican treat, and so the farther away you get from Mexico, I guess probably the less likely you are to find them. I'm not sure, but I mean, you know, they're sold by some kind of American distributor. Oh, they're this is a fight the enemies level, isn't sure it? They're amazing. it? Oh, well, we're just gonna redo that one. Huh? Yeah, there was someone behind me. Where'd she go? Oh, <laughs> she ran off. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to have my daughter two weekends in a row because her mom is out of town. Even only bad thing is that I have to work the graveyard shift this weekend. Uh, Royal Bob is eight years old as of a couple days ago, so congratulations, yeah, Royal Bob. In real life, he has just yep. turned 19. Bless his little heart. I like uh, I like it where you can still fit all the candles. <laughs> on the cake, you know? Yep. That's been years for you, isn't it? I uh, know, just centuries. <laughs> yeah, back when Adam was doing it, the kennels were still made out of, I don't know, goats or something. You know, I'm pretty sure they've always been wax. <laughs> Goat wax. No, just wax. That must be an interesting kind of wax. French wax, English wax, wax is <laughs> wax. By the way, this game is so fun, I really wish I wasn't so sleepy, because you can see I'm dying a lot. I can do a lot better than this at this particular kind of game. I'm not good at every kind of game, but I am fairly good at platformers. So I wish I wasn't dying so much. Just, if you're good at platformers, I'm sure you'll do a lot better than this. We all should be. This game is $15. A little bit... I kind of expected it to be $10 as far as the amount of campaign content there is. I mean, there's there are a lot of levels. I don't know. What do you guys think about that price point? 15 bucks seems all right, although I probably wouldn't pick it up until it was under 10. Personally. I mean, 15 is the going price for kind of your smaller console games now, so I think that's fair. Okay. I should retract my complaint then. But it does have... I kind of wish it had, I mean, I wish it had co-op. I think yes. co-op would be a good fit for this. It does have competitive multiplayer for up to four players. That's a good thing. It's not to be confused with a game like, God, there's a lot of local multiplayer only games. I was really, how would you say it? I was really kind of amped up about that last week. You know, Adam, you saw my tweet about the subject. Yeah. I was trying, you know, I, I racked my brain trying to think of, and I, I know there are some, but... Yeah, I'm sure there's NES and Super NES era games that fit within the local multiplayer only classification, but nobody can really remember them, and I don't blame you. Oh, Hello, Alejandro, thank you. Man, we got some great support this I was this trying weekend. to remember if, Ar if Archon was or not, I couldn't... I can't remember if you could play, if there was like a, you could play against a computer or you had to play I, against I looked it up. Else. Whoa, Gomez, thank you. Jeez, man, you guys are all so nice. Thank you. Man, you put <laughs> one link in the chat and they just go crazy. That is why we do these streams, because we have an awesome audience who I literally love. And 
you guys make this a lot of fun to do, and it's always so good to see you every weekend, and for the really cool people during the week when we do midweek streams. We have been... Are you saying you're not cool if you don't show up? Well, I'm saying you could be yep. a little cooler if you don't. Ah. But there's no reason to set limits. Everyone can be as awesome as they want to be, right? True. Yeah, and we could point that out. I have been streaming midweek once or twice a week the last month or so, and I would like to see more people show up for that. As long as you're following me on EastX Twitch, you should be getting notifications for when we do those. So please try to come if you can. We always do stream at the same time, so at least you can know. Well, it'll be at 8 p.m. Central, 6 Pacific. You'll know that. You and I true we don't usually announce what day we're gonna do those streams in advance, but you should get the email notification. So please come if you can. Those we're a little more free to interact with the audience or we're a little more free to talk about, I don't know, maybe slightly raunchier things. We still never get very bad about that though. Yeah, it's it's an in, it's a more intimate setting. Absolutely. And we can just play whatever we feel like, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a game that we organized it with the publisher. So again, that's how we're going to play Shadow of Mordor, a game I bought myself, and different games like that. Nice. Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to... My wife really... It got so much game. praise, you know, it was on a lot of people's best games of the year list. But getting review copies out of Warner Brothers is like pulling teeth out of a dinosaur. That seems well, that's pretty easy. They're dead. <laughs> I'm talking about an angry living dinosaur. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, that'd be, that'd yeah, be like a for more instance, we really wanted to review Lego Dimensions, and man, I tracked down every lead I could for getting a proper PR contact for that, and it just did not happen. Yeah, so unfortunate. We did. That looks like a new thing, although the, the initial outlay is a bit rich for my blood. 100 bucks is a lot to pay for a game right up front, but you, I mean, the portal that it comes with is really cool. It's more advanced compared to what Disney Infinity and, like, a, I mean, and Skylanders do. 